We all know how to use the media query to get the size of the whole screen's width and height. More often than not though, you do not want to adjust the size of a widget based on the dimensions of the whole screen. The most alarming example of this need is a safe area, where we would probably want to adjust its children not based on the whole screen size, but rather on the cropped size which is available inside the safe area. Hello, welcome to Reso Coder, where you are getting prepared for real app development by building better, faster, more stable apps. So subscribe and hit the bell if you want to grow your coding skills. And also, if you are not aware of it yet, an amazing Flutter conference is going to be taking place in January the next year, that is 2020, and it's going to happen in Warsaw, Poland. People from Google will be there, I will be there, even Felix Angelov, the creator of the block library, will be there. And overall, it's going to be packed with awesome presentations, and you will have an absolutely amazing opportunity to meet up with the Flutter community. So check out the link from the video description or also go to FlutterEurope.dev to learn more. Imagine that we are building an app which doesn't have an ad bar and inside of it we simply have a designer which provided us with some really awesomely looking designs where we have a container which should take up one half of the available space. But that available space, as you can see in the already finished app, does not take into account the space which is taken by the status bar up top. So by the end of this tutorial, you will know how to build a UI looking like this, where this container takes up only the half of the space available inside the safe area that is excluding the status bar. Because currently, when I run the example project, which I have already built for you, so that you do not need to create this kind of a simple UI. When I run this, this starter project is already using the media query, but the problem with a media query is that it takes the size of the whole screen and not only the size of the safe area. And not even speaking about the fact that we are not even using safe area in the starter project. So this is how the starter project's running app looks like. We definitely do not want it to look like this, although surely now this container definitely takes up one half of the whole screen, but we want it to take up only one half of the safe area, which we are going to add there in just a bit. And actually we are going to create our own custom responsive safe area. And if you want to get this starter project, so you do not need to start from scratch and also get the written tutorial and go over this lesson at your own pace, definitely check out the link from the description where you can also find all of the code written in this video. The first thing which we obviously need to do to fix this UI is to add a safe area. So currently we have the starter project which contains a builder just so that we can access the media query through an inherited widget because we need to somehow get the context to be passed into a child widget and Builder allows us to do that without us creating manually some stateless or stateful widgets all over the place. And what we need to do next is to simply provide a safe area to be a wrapper of the container. So if we wrap with new widget, safe area, and save that, now we go over to the emulator, we can see that immediately the widget, this container has jumped down and is no longer being behind the status bar. But the problem now is that we cannot just call it a day just yet, because we are still using the whole screen size and dividing it by two. But we do not want this container to take up the half of the whole screen. We want it to take up only half of the safe area height, which is a bit less than the size of the whole screen because safe area does not take up the space occupied by the status bar. And I know that this kind of a height difference may seem trivial to some of you, but just imagine that you are working with a designer and well, unless you enjoy heated design related arguments, following the design to the T is a must. And our designer said, 
this container should take up precisely one half of the safe area or of the available space except for the status bar so we need to follow this design spec we are going to accomplish this by introducing our own responsive safe area and actually you can expand what you learn in this tutorial to other widgets than safe area as well just like we can get the size of the whole screen from the media query we want to be able to get the size of just the safe area and for that we are going to create a builder method which will be called responsive builder and it will provide the size of the safe area in question and the way we are going to create the children of safe area we are no longer going to provide a direct child for the safe area but instead we are going to provide a builder which will pass us the size of the safe area so without any further talking let's get to the implementation so you can see how we will actually implement it in practice so let's create a new file layout responsive safe area that dart and inside of it after importing material it's probably a good idea to create a type definition for the builder method because we do not just want to pass around a bunch of uh, functions everywhere we want to concentrate that function into a type definition so that we know what we are talking about throughout the rest of the code and the function which we are going to want to use will be called responsive builder and it's going to be equal to a widget returning function which will take two parameters or it will pass us two parameters to be more correct and to keep this flutter compliant we will of course need to pass down the context just like we get passed the context from this builder and just like we have a context passed into the build method which is in a stateless or a stateful widget the same needs to be true for our own custom builder so that we can access the context even from the children of our responsive safe area so let's put a build context in here context and then we want to pass the size of the safe area so size and with that we have this type def done now how are we going to obtain this available size of the safe area well we are going to use a layout builder for that which provides us with the constraints available within a widget we could actually do that directly even without creating our own custom widget but creating custom widgets is a nice way to separate your code but if we did not care about codes cleanness and separation of concerns we could definitely do something like this we could wrap the child of the safe area so the container in this case which should take up half of the size of the safe area we can wrap that inside a new widget called layout builder and this layout builder does not take in a child but instead it takes in a builder method so let's just cut out this container and this layout builder will have a builder and this passes us a context and also constraints and inside of here we can return the container and these constraints which come in from the layout builder contain the dimensions of the safe area and the constraints can provide us with a bunch of interesting things but we are only interested in constraints dot biggest right because if you think about it there's also small is and all of that stuff but the biggest constraints are what we are after because when you take a look we are really interested in the largest constraint for the height and the largest constraint for the width of the safe area so that's why we are using constraints that biggest and this is a size right so we can get its height and divided by two and uh, 
we could really call it a day even now once we save that and go over to the emulator and actually I will position this emulator so that it we can see how it jumps up so currently this bottom edge of the container is at the point of the top edge of this bracket this square bracket but when I change back from using constraints of the safe area and we change back to using the media query so we change to using the whole screen's height not just the height of the safe area the bottom edge of the container will jump down so let's do that right now we are just going to revert the code back right so we are again at media query and when i save this now and open up the emulator you can see that it really did jump down it's no longer on par with the top edge of the square bracket as you can see so the code is working we are definitely using the size of just the safe area without the status bar up top but how can we make this cleaner because using a layout builder together with a safe area and using constraints that biggest who is going to remember that well that's why we are going to create our own custom widget responsive safe area using this responsive builder so let's go ahead and create a state less widget responsive safe area and inside of it we are going to return a safe area which will hold a layout builder just like we are doing in main.dart currently and this layout builder as we are already doing right now inside main.dart will pass us a context and also constraints and from there we will want to return something now how can we return a custom widget from within this layout builder when we are now inside responsive safe area we definitely do not want to hard code this container into responsive safe area because we might want to use our new responsive safe area widget with other things than just this awfully looking green container with these two text inside a column well that's precisely why we have created this responsive builder beforehand because now we can use this responsive builder to build any widget we like to build first though we need to add this responsive builder function higher order function that is into this responsive safe area widget as a field so final responsive builder let's call it responsive builder and now we're going to create constructor for final fields using control and dot in vs code and what we want to probably do is to make this responsive builder required that's always a good thing to do a good practice to make everything which needs to be passed in to be required but also we probably do want to keep with the flutter way of doing things and when you take a look at all of the builders for example even this one right here it's just simply called builder but currently our builder inside responsive safe area is called responsive builder so let's change this so that the parameter passed into the constructor will be called just builder for that we need to provide a type even here so responsive builder let's call it builder and now we need to populate the responsive builder field with whatever is passed into this constructor parameter so we are going to say responsive builder is equal to builder and with that we've just kind of implemented the constructor what's left to do now for us to do is that inside this layout builder we want to return whatever is passed into the responsive builder function so in other words we want to invoke the responsive builder and pass in the context and then constraints dot biggest which is the size we are interested in the biggest size the biggest space available inside the safe area as we could already see and now what we can finally do of course after we return responsive builder it's not just enough to invoke it we need to return it what we can now do after all of this is done is to hop into main.dart 
and clean up our code by not using directly the layout builder and save area and all of that but instead we are going to use our custom responsive safe area so i would just probably cut out the column or the container as a whole and instead of returning safe area i'm going to return responsive safe area and after importing that and providing a builder which passes us a context and size we can now return whatever we were returning before so this container with these two text widgets and instead of using constraints we can now just use size dot height which is gotten from those constraints but it's done behind the scenes so we do not need to care about this responsive safe area code and also now we are not using the media query dot off inherited widget so we no longer need to even wrap the responsive safe area inside another builder so we can just remove this builder so actually the body of the material app will be the responsive safe area directly so let's just do that and after that we can actually remove all of these comments because they are no longer true and now when we take a look at the app we have just built it's going to look precisely the same as it did when we were hard coding the layout builders and all of that into main.dart directly but now it's nicely contained inside a nice responsive safe area widget and as i said the concepts which you learned in this video do not apply only to safe areas you can use it to fill in a container or whatever else you are trying to fill in to go through this tutorial at your own pace once again and to also get all of the code check out the written tutorial available from the link in the video description also go to flutter.education to get the top curated flutter news and resources aimed at improving your app development career i curate those resources myself and i really try to pick the best ones which will allow you to progress as a flutter developer and grow your skills so go to flutter.education and link is available also from the video description over there you will be also able to subscribe to my mailing list to get those flutter news and resources delivered weekly right into your inbox and if you do not want to miss more tutorials like this definitely subscribe to this channel and also join the notification squad by hitting the bell button to make sure you grow your flutter skills because here on Reso Coder, i am absolutely determined to provide you with the best app development tutorials and resources out there if this video helped you with implementing a responsive widget or a responsive safe area give it a like and also share it with other developers who may also be struggling with creating responsive widgets on flutter leave a comment if you have anything to say and see you in the next video